And now, please welcome Sarah Smith. Thank you. General Idea, an artist group comprised of Felix Parts, Jorge Zontal, and A.A. Bronson, invented their history and made it reality. They inverted the standard trope that history follows real events. They made their lives into art, and in doing so, they redefined Canadian art history. General Idea's approach is best captured in their 1975 explanation. Quote, we wanted to be famous, glamorous, and rich. That is to say, we wanted to be artists, and we knew that if we were famous and glamorous, we could say that we would be artists, and we would be. We did, and we are. We are famous, glamorous artists." End quote. Tonight, I'm gonna to speak to you about the impact that General Idea had on the contemporary art scene and about the Canadian context of their work. General Idea met in 1969 in Toronto at Theatre Pass Mirai, which at the time was a keynote in the city's countercultural scene. For 25 years, the group went on to produce innovative, critical, cheeky, and glamorous conceptual art projects. Their work prioritized ideas. Art, for General Idea, was more than something to be hung on a wall. It posed questions about society, and it took shape in many forms, from a faux beauty pageant to a poster. Working together, General Idea upheld a non-hierarchical, consensus-based approach. The group considered itself a single entity, implicitly critiquing the convention of the artist as an individual genius. Working and living together until 1994, General Idea were prolific. They made art using a range of media, including photography, sculpture, painting, as well as new formats for art in the period, such as mail art, video, performance, installation, and artist multiples. This slide here shows four works, including an acrylic painting, which appropriates the style of the Dutch artist Piet Mondrian, a silver AIDS ring, which is an artist multiple, an installation of pills, which addresses the AIDS crisis, and a still from a video work that mimicked the conventions of television. These examples all reveal how the group frequently used appropriation to play with viewers' ex expectations. They reworked formats and aesthetics from popular culture and fine art to address key social issues, including media and consumption, the social construction of the artist, and AIDS. General Ideas Practice reveals several key can elements of its Canadian context. For instance, the group's work was deeply rooted in the influence of the renowned Canadian communications theorist, Marshall McLuhan, whose ideas about popular culture, communication technology, and media came to prominence in the 1960s. In his book, Understanding Media, The Extensions of Man, McLuhan addressed how media and communications technology shape society, and he coined the phrase, the very famous phrase, the medium is the message. McLuhan's notion that the social effects of television, advertising, and radio deserve critical analysis is echoed in General Idea's appropriation of the beauty pageant, including the production of their most iconic work, the 1971 Miss General Idea pageant, a male art project and a performance piece. This was one of a series of faux beauty pageants the group created to explore gender stereotyping and celebrity culture, as well as interrogate glamour, fame, and the art world. General Idea solicited entries to the pageant from artists across North America, mailing entry kits, which you can see here on this slide, containing rules and regulations, pageant documents, and a pageant gown. The entries were all exhibited at A Space here in Toronto, and the project culminated in an extravagant award ceremony, which was staged at the Art Gallery of Ontario. Reflecting General Idea's interest in interrogating media, as well as their desire to advance their self invented mythology and build the burgeoning Canadian art scene, in 1972, the group created their own publication, File Magazine. In doing so, they appropriated the format of a news magazine, while specifically mimicking the name and visual culture of the widely distributed American news magazine, Life. You can see the similarities here in this slide, which presents the very first issue of File, alongside a cover of Life magazine. Filled with wisecracks, wordplay, and cryptic layers of fact and fiction, File ran for 26 issues, closing in 1989. 
here on this slide is an image from Vile magazine, which is an artist directory, so a listing of artist names and addresses. So while advancing general ideas, interests, and work, Vile helped to build the Canadian art scene by providing a venue for the dissemination of other artists' projects, as well as by publishing artist directories, which connected artists across Canada and internationally. And here it's interesting, I think, to just note that Greg Kerno was uh, interviewed in Vile magazine in one of their issues. General Idea also contributed to building the Canadian art scene by establishing the artist-run centre Art Metropole in 1974, an institution many of you may know as it's still uh, operating today in the city. This institution advanced the group's practice. In fact, Art Metropole was conceived of as an artwork. It was the archive and the museum shop for the 1984 Miss General Idea Pavilion. It also significantly supports other artist projects. For instance, distributing materials, including artist books, videos, posters, multiples, and t-shirts, as well as publishing critical texts. Another key facet of the group's work was their contributions to the discourse around LGBTQ rights at a moment of critical change in North America. The group met in 1969, the year homosexuality was decriminalized in Canada and that the Stonewall riots rocked New York City. As a group of three men who identified as gay, General Ideas Art was a site for the group's playful explorations of gender and sexuality. Here, their statements were decades ahead of their time. In works such as Baby Makes Three, General Idea made brazen and playful references to queer identity. This portrait shows the group together in bed with rosy cheeks and rounded faces, alluding to a traditional nuclear family while also suggesting a queering of this format. The work also references the nature of their collaboration, in which their domestic lives and their art production were intertwined. This work, uh, which I love, Mondo Kane Kama Sutra, clearly depicts trios of fornicating neon poodles. And the poodle was actually a key symbol in General Ideas Oeuvre. It emerged in the 1980s, and it was intended as a cliched image signifying gayness in mainstream North American culture. So in addition to these explorations of sexuality, General Idea made a profound contribution to the discourse around HIV and AIDS. In the late 1980s, AIDS was a taboo topic. It was surrounded by fear and misunderstanding due to widespread and extreme homophobia. Inaccurate and inflammatory information about the disease circulated widely in the media, and the scope and severity of the AIDS pandemic was not at first understood. General Idea created their very first AIDS painting in 1987, and this was intended for an exhibition in support of the American Foundation for AIDS Research. A brazen work that was shocking in its cheerful visualization and allusions to promiscuity, AIDS appropriated American pop artist Robert Indiana's ubiquitous love painting. So the AIDS painting marked a shift in the group's production and the disease itself became a focus of their practice through the 1990s. General Idea went on to use the AIDS logo in a range of media, including sculpture, painting, wallpaper, posters, and multiples. You get a sense of that in this slide, where you can see on the left-hand side the AIDS painting installed in a gallery setting on AIDS wallpaper. And on the right-hand side, we have two images, a poster, as well as a documentation photograph featuring the public installation of their AIDS posters. The group really saw the, the logo uh, as a publicity campaign, a campaign to spread awareness and combat the stigma and fear surrounding the disease, while also raising questions about copyright and consumerism. The importance and activist dimension of the logo cannot be understated. General Ideas' work gained further significance when Parts and Zontal were diagnosed as HIV positive in 1989 and 1990. The group ceased activity in 1994 due to the deaths of Parts and Zontal from AIDS-related causes. General Ideas' conceptual projects across multiple media were audacious, brave, and groundbreaking. Their art critically examined the media, significantly influenced the development of the art scene in Canada, advanced queer identity, and made a profound contribution to AIDS activism. Although the group's work began in Canada and is very much rooted in its Canadian context, they were internationally celebrated. Ultimately, General Idea's legacy lies in their unique and enduring collaboration and the continuing residence of their work. Thank you so much. <laughs>